Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. I never really wanted my name in lights or on the big marquee, and now I've got both. Today in Dave's Garage, we continue the tutorials on Arduino and FastLED, not just by developing a new effect or two, but by implementing some of the drawing code that we'll need in order to move on to learning some of the more elegant and realistic effects. Take the simple marquee below. The difference might not be immediately obvious, but if you look more closely at the glow than the LEDs themselves, you'll see that the green ones are nicely smooth scrolling, while the red ones are scrolling by a chunky entire LED every time. Which makes sense, because after all, you can't draw just part of an LED. Or can you? That's what we'll be doing today, precision, floating point drawing for smooth effects. If I might be so bold, I think it's a bit of a trademark of mine. Many of my effects have a smooth organic feel to them rather than the blocky, obviously digital movement. And today, I shall pass this secret family wisdom onto you and yours. Just as I've updated the marquee effect to be smooth, we can add fluid motion to something as simple as our very first twinkle effect. But this only makes sense when we can drift a pixel by a fractional amount. Otherwise, slow motion just wouldn't be possible. Sometimes you'll have a mix of fast and slow particles, such as with my fireworks effect. The inner particles move slowly while the outer particles move quickly. I found that getting this relative motion correct was essential to making the effect look authentic. After all, it's a 1D strip. Doing a convincing explosion in one dimension isn't easy, and you need to get the motion correct so that your brain fills in the rest of the picture. Even for fast moving pieces like this super color comet, precise fractional drawing allows you to overlap pieces of arbitrary size, which is how the rainbow body of the comet is constructed and how it is able to be springy in length. Fractional drawing is also handy for things like the flame effect, where a single frame update might drift part of the flame far less than an entire pixel. By eliminating the jerky one pixel movement, you can achieve a much smoother and more realistic effect. Fractional and periodic drawing coming right up on Dave's Garage. Let's get to it. Okay, now that you have a rough idea of why you would want precision drawn, what does it mean, how is it implemented, and how do you call it? We'll go over those three things. To start with, what it means is the ability to draw from an arbitrary floating point position on the LED strip, like starting at uh, LED 2.5 or 2.75, and drawing through some arbitrary length and ending at a floating point target. That also allows you to draw for an arbitrary floating point length. But how is it possible, since you can't just draw the right-hand side of an LED? Well, what you can do is you can draw portions of the light that would be emitted from an LED if it were otherwise lit to its full color. So if we take the color, we figure out what fraction of that LED should be lit, we figure out the fraction of the color for that LED, apply that color to the LED, and it actually just kind of works, especially if it's in motion, then the brain fills in a lot of the rest. But even if it's static, it allows you to position things with some fairly fine accuracy. Now this doesn't matter if you are doing stage effects at 100 meters, but it does matter if you've got the strip right there in the same room with you and you're looking at it up close. In order to help you make better sense of it, I made a little drawing. I hope you like it. Here it is. Wait, no, wait, here it is, here it is. <laughs> so what does this masterpiece represent? Well, the three boxes on the bottom are three LEDs on an LED strip. The red bar in the top is a section we wish that we could draw from 0.75 ending at 2.50 for a length of 1.75, but obviously starting not exactly on LED boundaries. So to break this down into manageable pieces, we need to figure out what the leading pixel is, how many body pixels are, because they're always fully lit, and then what the trailing pixel is going to be. To calculate the leading pixel, we're going to figure out what the overlap is between the bar and the LED, and we're going to do the same thing at the trailing end. So how do we do it for the leading pixel? Well, we know we're starting at 0.75, and we know that at least in this case, we're going all the way to the end of the LED, so therefore we're going to light up 0.25. But 0.25 of what? Well, 0.25 of red, or whatever color it is that we're actually trying to achieve. You multiply the color by 0.25, you get a resultant color back out, you store that in the first pixel, you go on to the next pixel. Well, that's a full pixel, so we just store red there. Now we move on to the last pixel. We draw from the beginning of the pixel, which we know is 2.0, and we have 0.50 left to go, which is really all we need to know, because to draw it of 2.5, we just draw that remaining 0.5, and we're done. We do that by multiplying the color by 0.5, filling it in this third pixel, and that's it. So clearly the first thing we have to be able to do is to be able to multiply a color by a fraction. So let's write color fraction right now.
So why 1.0 minus the fraction multiplied by 255 into fade to black? Well, if you think about it, we're going to fade this color by everything except the fraction asked for. If we want 0.75 of a color, that means we're going to fade 0.25 of it away. So 1.0 minus 0.75 gives us the 0.25, and then we multiply that by 255 because everything in this function is expected in 0 to 255 format. So, now that we've got that, we can write our simple, well, it's not going to be super simple, but it'll be understandable now, draw pixels function. It's the one that's going to draw the leading pixel, the body pixels, and then the trailing pixel. So the color is basically describing the red bar that we saw in that earlier diagram. Where does it start, how many pixels long is it, and what color is it? <laughs> Interesting spelling, let me fix that. So to break this down, the FPOS minus the long of FPOS is basically taking the number and then removing the long integer portion of it, which is everything to the left of the decimal place. So what does that leave you with? The fractional portion of a floating point number. It's kind of a neat trick. And to get the amount that we need, or that we want to draw, to the end of the pixel, we start at the end of the pixel, 1.0, and subtract the fraction that we just calculated. That gives us, in our example, the 0.25. It's a measurement of how far it is from the start of the line to the end of the first pixel. Have you spotted the bug in my logic yet? Because I'm going to account for it, but if you haven't, the problem is what if this bar is really short? What if it doesn't even go to the end of whatever pixel we're talking about? That's a boundary case we have to check for. So this statement will give us the lesser of the distance to the end of the pixel or the distance to the end of the line. So as we make our way through the rest of this function, remaining will always keep track of how many pixels we have left to draw. In our example case, it started out at 1.75, and then when we drew the first 0.25, that left us with 1.5 left. Then we drew the next full pixel, that left us with 0.5 left. That's the progression that we're going to see for the remaining variable as we draw. And IPOS is the index into the array, since we can't use the full loading point variable to index into an array. It is the initial integer copy of it, and we'll just advance it by one every time. So we draw the first pixel, we advance the integer position of where we're drawing to the next pixel for our next draw, and we add in a fraction of the color being used equal to the amount necessary for the first pixel. We then decrement the remaining pixels to be drawn by the amount we drew into that first pixel. This draws the body pixels as long as there's more than one entire pixel left to draw. Why more than one? Because if there's only exactly one, our trailing pixel can actually be up to one full pixel. So we have to draw anything additional here in the middle. Otherwise, up to one full pixel, we defer to the last pixel. So when we get to this final clause, if there's anything left to draw for the trailing pixel, we draw that much. It could be up to a full pixel, which would just be the original color. But anything less than that is going to be some fraction of that color. So there you go. A front leading pixel, zero or more body pixels in the middle, and then a trailing pixel. There is a weird case, as we noted, where you only get the lead pixel if the lead pixel is so small that it doesn't go into the second pixel even. So imagine you were starting at 0.5 and only drawing for 0.25 you'd go from 0.5 to 0.75, never even hitting the end of the pixel. I should have explained that when I was doing the math for that. So rewind and now it'll make sense. So to test it, I'm going to draw a quick and dirty marquee that goes both directions, one that goes smoothly and one that goes pixel by pixel. And that way we can see them at the same time on the screen and appreciate, is there really a difference? Since I generally show you the effect in the intro anyway, you've probably already seen it, but now you'll see the actual drawing code and why and how it's smooth. So 
So scroll is going to be the amount by which the marquee is shifted. It's going to cycle by 0.1 each frame and advance till it gets to five and then back around to zero and up to five and back around to zero. Here you can see we're going to smoothly at position I, which is not for integer, that's for index. So I is going to be a floating point variable that's going to sweep by 0.1 each step. Each time we land, we're going to draw three pixels at a precise floating point position. I, in this case, standing for index and not integer, is the position at which we're going to draw it. All right, there you go, smooth marquee. You can go back and apply this to the twinkle effect, and you might be especially impressed if you try it on the bouncing ball effect. Particularly if you take the speed knob and crank it up so that the balls are really moving slowly, then you get to watch them carefully. And then switch to a smooth draw. You'll see it and appreciate how the balls now track almost magically in between pixels somehow. Almost magic. We now have all the tools we need to move on to some pretty cool effects. I hope you enjoyed seeing my attempt at precise floating point drawing. I did this one sort of on the fly based on first principles, so odds are there's a way more efficient way to do this that was likely invented back in the 1960s. If you know of one, please point me at it in the comments. In the meantime, as long as you can afford the slight performance hit, I think it's a huge improvement in almost every effect that I've applied it to. I think you'd be especially impressed if you went back and applied this code to the bouncing ball effect, and then slowed it down by increasing the speed knob to the point where the balls were traveling really slowly. You could really then see the difference between a smoothly drawn ball and the jagged motion of a full pixel drawing. I know I've been teasing you with the mention of the flame effect, but first I wanted to get the fast LED macros and the fractional drawing under our belts before we tackled it. Now we know everything we need to know, so our next episode is, in fact, a little pyromania. If you want to see that flame effect and all the others that come after it, then you absolutely, positively, better be subscribed. And you'll also need to turn on the bell icon and personal recommendations. As I like to remind you each time, I'm not selling anything and I don't have any Patreons. I'm truly just in this for the subs and likes. So if you appreciated the episode, please be sure to leave me at least one of each before you go. Join me next time in Dave's Garage when we develop a flame effect that's so realistic it can be tuned for everything from candles to rocket engines. No joke. Until then, thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you next time.